So now we've created the capture point and we've associated it with a buffer. So we're pretty much good to go. Uh, just real quick here, show you that iOS did generate a message when you create the capture point. It doesn't really do anything when you create the buffers or associate the buffers, but when you're doing stuff with the capture points, it seems to give you messages for that. So let's go ahead and take a look at our show commands. Start with the uh, capture point. So now we can see that we do have a capture buffer associated. And if we do the same thing here with our buffer, we can see so the associated capture points, you know, FA1 under bar one. The difference is, is that you can only associate a capture point with a single buffer, whereas a buffer can have multiple capture points. So you could have multiple interfaces, say FA10, FA11, and have them going to the same buffer. You can also have the same interface, just capturing a little di bit different traffic. So you could have one that's FA1 under bar one, inbound and outbound, instead of doing both, but whatever. Just the point to take away from that is that you can assign multiple capture points to a single buffer, but capture points points can only be assigned to a single buffer. Okay, so we got this all set up for EPC. We've got the buffer created capture point, and then we have the two associated. So what's left now is to just start our packet capture. And the way we do that is with another variation on the monitor capture point command. And you can see here we have start and stop. So we're going to start, and you have the option to start all or the particular one, which is gonna be FA1 under bar one in this case. So let's go ahead and do that and let's take a look at the show command. So we did, again, when we do stuff with the capture points, it seems like it gives us messages. Let's take a look at the parameters on the buffer first and you can see now that's active. So we are actively capturing packets. We don't have any yet because we haven't sent any traffic. There might be some that get captured because there might just be keep alive stuff going on. And then we could do the same thing with the point. And once again here we see now that it is active. So let's go ahead and go over to router 2, which is playing the role of a laptop. And let's do a couple things. First, let's go ahead and ping, send two ping packets to the device playing the web server. And then let's go ahead and tell that to it. And we should be done now. So we sent ICMP traffic and telnet traffic. I'm sorry, not telnet. Did I say telnet? We've sent HTTP traffic. And for those of you who don't know, that's being simulated by telnetting on port 80. So it's actually sending information on port 80. So let's go ahead and before we stop this, let's go and check our buffer. And we can see here now we've got 30 packets that are captured. So let's go ahead and stop this. And it's pretty easy to stop it. Same thing as start. Just change it to stop. And now if we issue that parameter for buffers command, we should see inactive. So we do have 30 packets now. Okay, so we have captured our packets. Now we need to go ahead and analyze these packets. And there's two ways to do that. You can do it on the router or preferably you export these packets to another device that has something like Wireshark running on it. And that's what we're gonna do. Don't think I'm gonna be able to do this on the router. Let me see here. So to do that, you would do the show monitor capture buffer, and we're going to specify my buffer, and we can, okay. I swear when I tested this out before that I wasn't able to do that. So if you want to do this on the router, you'll use the dump command. So show monitor capture buffer, then specify your buffer, then dump, and you have some filtering options. Um, we're not going to go through those, but I'll give you a quick peek at these. You can filter by direction, interface, layer three protocol, blah, blah, blah. In this case, we only have 30 packets, so it's not gonna be a big deal. So let's hit enter here, and here we go. We can see our packets, and remember we're only capturing the first, do we say 100 bytes? I can't remember, but uh, it shows you the time, the type, it's IPv4, the interface, and you can see some of the payload here. There's not gonna be anything really interesting in these, I don't think. And honestly, it doesn't give you a whole lot of information. You're looking at these packets and you probably want to even dump this into something because I'm not seeing anything that differentiates it from ICMP. I don't see the protocol or the ports that it's using. But if you just want a quick and dirty, you can do this on the router. So while you can look at these on the router, it's really limited in its functionality. What you're gonna do most of the time is you're going to export this packet capture to a device that has something with some more functionality like Wireshark. And the way that you do that is with the monitor capture buffer, then specify your buffer and you're going to want to export. And when you export, it's gonna give you a number of options. So you can see there's plenty of different protocols you can use. You can use FTP, TFTP, HTTP, secure HTTP, blah, blah, blah. We're gonna use TFTP and I actually have a TFTP server running. I've got SolarWinds setting up here. 
I just want to make sure everything started. Okay, so it's running on 10.1.1.100, which is going to be the IP address of my PC. So when you do this, TFTP, and the format for TFTP is pretty similar to HTTP. It's going to be a colon, two forward slashes, and then the name or the IP address. And in this case, I did say .100, right? Okay, and now if you hit enter here, you might be used to using Cisco IOS to, you know, do a copy TFTP with the running configuration. And generally you can hit enter and it will prompt you for additional information like the name of the file and all that stuff. Here it's not going to. It's going to actually say it's failed, but then it really doesn't give you any information why it failed. Like, you know, no file name specified, TFTP server not available, blah, 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 blah. Actually, let's do that real quick to make sure that I don't make a monkey out of myself. I'll make sure that, okay, I can get to it. So let's go back up to this. So you're gonna want to add another forward slash and then put in the file name. And in this case, I'm just gonna put my capture. You can hit enter here and not specify the file extension. Because I'm using Wireshark, I'm going to use a PCAP extension. So PCAP, you could do this without specifying specifying it, it'll save it on your box and you might have to rename it to the appropriate file extension. I like to do it here so that I know what it is later on. And hit enter and you can see not a lot of information. You get one bang. The bangs are good, periods are bad. So this means that information was sent and we can verify that on our TFTP server. You can see that we got the information and now I'm going to go ahead and pull up the folder on my PC that this is stored in. So here's my capture and it's a Wireshark capture file. That's the benefit of having the PCAP on there. If we were to do this without putting the PCAP, let's call this 2. Do the same thing. It'll send it over, but when we take a look on my PC, it doesn't have the file extension. So whatever, it's not necessary, but it's nice to do. So I'm going to double click on this and launch Wireshark. All right, and here we are within Wireshark. I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail on how to use Wireshark, but you can see we got 30 packets. The first four here are our ICMP packets that we sent. We sent two pings, so you can see the source and the destination. So it was sourced from the laptop to the web server, and then the reply comes back. And then here we can see this is all our TCP traffic. This is us on HTTP, and in Wireshark, you can take a look at the packet information down here. You got the raw data, you've got the frames, and it'll tell you all kinds of information here. Again, I'm not gonna go through this, how to use this. The real cool bit here that we're gonna look at is that if you get on a TCP stream and you right click it and you choose follow TCP stream, it will reconstruct that TCP stream for you. And so here we can see what we sent. Here was me sending boobies, and then here is the web server saying, I don't know what boobies means which just makes me sad. Uh, real quick here, you can see the entire conversation read is sourced from the laptop, which is gonna be 10.1.100.100, and then the blue is sourced from the web server. And you can change that just to see, you know, here I want only the stuff that's coming from my laptop, which is boobies, and then just the stuff that's coming from my web server. And here you can see this might be where you would want to capture more of the packet. We only captured the first 100 bytes, I believe. So in this case, that's all the payload data that's there. So it didn't spit out everything that it ended up with CIS. I'm sure this is supposed to be Cisco and then some other stuff here. So with any type of packet capture, a lot of the work is done beforehand, determining what you want to capture, how to filter down to it, how much of it you want to capture. So keep that in mind.